So, Praise of Method is a piece of music for solo piano. It was written for Sue and Reese and Hugh Watkins and commissioned by the Vale of Glamorgan Festival. The whole piece is in five sections, with three meditative, expressive sections contrasting against two faster, wilder sections. I really love the idea of genuinely and ironically writing about love. Love between two people, love of home, religious love, all these different, super serious ways of feeling. Because of this, I've recently written a load of pieces about love. About two weeks ago, I wrote a piece called Love, 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 and I'm just finishing up an orchestral piece called Waves of Love. So yeah, I'm really into this idea of writing about love. Praise of Method started as one of these pieces, but became something different over time. Each of the movements in Praise of Method grew from really similar little musical kernels, four or five notes or a chord, into small musical ideas, a melody, chord progression, or some riffs. As they grew bigger, they made me think of events and places I associate with love. I'd get these initial ideas down on the page or in the sequencer, I used to be this, push them around a bit and let them wander off in their own direction. As each of these movements took on their own shape more fully, I'd do as much as possible to bring out what I perceive to be their individual character, really, really leaning into the peculiarities. For example, the first movement has these fluttering gestures everywhere, and the middle movement has loads of interjecting E's and C's that get embraced by, but then later slip through, the texture. So, although these pieces are all about love, and although they all have similar beginnings, each one has its own identity, story, and dramatic arc. Each movement also has its own evocative title that alludes to the subject matter inspiring it. But I think it's better for these titles to be open-ended and mysterious, as it gives scope for people to read and hear the music in a way that's personal to them. I don't want to guide people's listening experiences by explaining my own lived experiences. In my recent music, I've also been playing with the idea of prayer as a state in which we express something like love, anguish, grief, determination, all this sort of stuff in a directed, focused and spiritually oriented way. I'm making it sound way more formal than it is in my practical music making. About 90% of the time, I generously describe what I do as advanced noodling. But I find there's something really poetic and engaging in the idea of trying to reach beyond my own feelings and trying to touch on something numinous and transcendent. Trying to be profound and pretentious in this way is totally preposterous, so it feels preposterous, especially as an atheist, at best an agnostic, but I really believe that music can move us in ways that are actually profound and meaningful. So it's fun and musically rewarding to pretend and convince myself that I can make music in this way. I like to think of each of the movements in Praise of Method as a focused musical prayer about love. So let's talk about some technical stuff. The slow movements have a grasping, yearning quality. This is enhanced by expressively switching between quavers and triplets. To me, the slight rhythmic expansions and contractions in these movements feel like uneven breaths, with the thickening and thinning of rhythmic writing feeling like changes in the rate of someone's breathing. Speaking frankly, most of the time I write intuitively, so the feel comes first and the technique comes second. I like this sound, I know what makes it happen, so I use this musical technique to make it work more successfully. In terms of describing the general feel of the piece, over the last two years I've spent a lot of time working on the completion of Liszt's Only Opera and playing lots of Eric Johnson songs on the guitar, and I think these are both really, really audible in this piece. For example, I love how Liszt will just hammer away at one note, so I do this a lot. I love the wide and spacious chords Eric Johnson plays. Super audible on Cliffs of Dover, especially the live versions. This is something I use a lot in my music. I wasn't trying to emulate any of his pieces. It just felt right to voice the chords in this way. But I do think this comes from stuff like Eric Johnson. I've been playing all this kind of shred guitar stuff when I was 13. I was really, really into it. And I used to do the Steve Vai 10-hour practice routine and everything.
Each of these movements was built by repeating a melody three times. Each time the melody is repeated, it is transposed, reharmonized, and performed a little more quickly. The final slow movement, title Praise of Method, is the clearest example of this structure. I think it's a really beautiful small piece, and as much as I love the whole of Praise of Method, I think this movement is actually one of the best pieces I've written. I spent a lot of the time trying to not get in my own way by adding a zillion notes, which is hard in and of itself. Another technical element is that all of the slower movements are in flat, heavy keys. I once heard, during an undergraduate lecture, the keys with lots of flats were used to express love and elation in classical and romantic opera. I don't really know if that's true. I like opera, but I'm not going to pretend I know loads about it. But I absolutely love the idea of flippantly taking a piece of information about something massively profound and trying to make something really emotional from it. What is love? Easy, it's G flat major. Just slap a load of flats on it and the whole thing is suddenly about love. As flippant as I'm being, thinking this way has helped me develop a personal structural style in my music. Associating keys with ideas and themes helps me build a dramatic narrative and arc. You know, it gives me something to believe in. The contrasting quicker movements are not just faster, they have a much stronger and more consistent pulse. Lots of my music is based around ideas repeating over and over again, but in these movements it happens on a much smaller scale. The left hand, right hand harmonization with chords and repeated melodic ideas is something that's really common to the rock and metal music I grew up listening to and writing. As I said with Eric Johnson stuff, I'm not trying to evoke that music or pastiche it, but it's definitely an influence that comes from years of guitar playing and writing music in bands. The guitar in one speaker plays a delicious riff, the guitar in the other speaker plays the rhythm part, which is usually some like chords with extended harmony. I think my favourite example of this now is The Way the News Goes by Periphery. It's a lot less cheesy than the examples that actually influenced me, like Lip Gloss and Black by Atreyu, or, you know, basically any emo song from the mid noughties Funeral for a Friend, loads of their stuff is packed with this. Each movement is about two to three minutes long, so they're all pretty concise. While I was writing this piece, I was also working on orchestral compositions for the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, a piece called Waves of Love, and the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra, a piece called Six Praise. They were 10 and 20 minutes, respectively, and with Waves of Love, the piece I was actively composing, I was using just one idea. So the contrast in structure present in Praise of Method was important for my creativity in a really general sense. I don't think I could have written two structurally similar pieces side by side. Actually, even writing two different pieces side by side was really hard. The final movement uh, from Praise of Method was originally written to be used in Waves of Love. It formed the whole ending of the piece, or one of the versions of it, I must have rewritten it about four times. I started orchestrating the thing and everything, but it just felt totally alien in the context of a wilder, headier piece that up until that point had just been based on one idea. And it also sounded like the other movements I'd been sketching for Praise of Method. So scaling it down for piano was one of those aha moments. It totally felt correct. And regardless of any of this, I knew that I'd use that movement almost immediately after I started writing it, which is a really nice feeling because that really, really happens. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe, like, comment, and click the bell. Thank you for watching.